I mean, the outside, where I keep going like this. I wonder if I should open up the window.
Get up in the Yeah, great. Just come in. Just, uh, thank you. Good to see you guys, too. Um, yeah, just maybe the pillow. Get a little bit to the right of it. I like the sign. Yeah, especially in church. Yeah, I, of course, of course. Okay.
right here, so.
here at St. Andrews for the celebration of life of Barbara Lester and those on the live stream as well. Hopefully uh, everybody's in from Minnesota on that live stream might be part of our service this morning. So we begin as we gather in memory of Barbara Lester to give thanks to God for the life that she lived, the love that she shared with her family and friends, and to commend her to our Lord's eternal care. When we begin our service in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Barbara. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, Console us who mourn. Give us your aid, so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Jackie. We remember today Barbara Marty Lester. This beautiful woman was born in Chicago, Illinois, and was graduated from New Glarus High School in 1948, a registered nurse who graduated from Agastana Hospital. She lived her life as a gracious, loving, and generous lady. On January 13, 2021, she passed from this life peacefully surrounded by love. She was a volunteer for San Diego Hospice for many years and a faithful practitioner of healing touch. She hosted weekly meetings in her home and a lover of angels. Barbara was a beautiful member of St. Andrew's Lutheran Church and will lovingly remembered for her love of God, family, and many friends. She was an amazing wife, mother, and grandmother. Barbara always had a heart for service and compassion. She was preceded in death in 2015 by her loving husband of 64 years, John Jack, as we knew him, and is survived by her sister, Margaret Hoglin, children Deborah Wilk, Denise Maxwell, and Douglas Lester. Barbara had six grandchildren, Jennifer Wenzel, James Wilk, Alexandria um, uh, Pinko, <laughs> Joshua Maxwell, Rachel Lester, Erica Lester, and three great-grandchildren, Penelope Wilk, Asher Pinko, and Aiden Pinko. She will be greatly missed by her family and her friends, and this congregation especially. And so now we come to our time of eulogies, and so... I think they're, they're uh, in order of age, and so we're yes. beginning with Jennifer Wenzel. Mm -hmm. All right. Barbara Lester wasn't just an exceptional human being. She was also my grandma. There are six of us who are blessed to be her biological grandkids but I have the special distinction of being the first. She always said all six of us were special, but there was something extra special about your first grandkid. When I was little, she and Grandpa would babysit me at their home in Fresno while my parents worked. They even took care of me when I had a case of chicken pox while Mom was pregnant with my little brother. They went along with my imaginary duck friends that I had and would even let me use their coasters to feed my duck friends. Grandma always treated me with kindness and compassion as she did to everyone. She wrote me letters constantly. She showed she cared and how much she loved me and would always be there when I needed a boost. She would send letters with clippings from the newspaper articles that she saw that would interest me and would tell me about everything going on with her and Grandpa and my cousins and family. My favorites were always the San Diego Comic Con Articles. She and Grandpa would tell me so many stories on the phone about the crazy dressed up people they had seen dressed up on the news and then send me the article about it. Before there was a Google News feed to let me know what was going on in the world, there was Grandma. <laughs> I saved all her letters, but I miss having new letters or emails from her now. I love to cook, and I have a culinary degree. I first learned cooking, making Rice Krispie treats with Grandma. I want to say that all six grandkids have made Rice Krispie treats with Grandma. She loved to send me recipes and I loved to remake the foods that she had made. If you went to Grandma's house and didn't leave with a full belly, that would be your own fault. Her house was always full of food and whenever my family and I would arrive from Fresno to San Diego for a visit, there was always food ready for us, which was such a blessing after the long day's drive. She always made sure to stock favorite foods and favorite flavors of ice cream, too. Grandma taught me so many things in life, including how to crochet, which is one of my favorite things to do. Grandma considered the blankets I made for her to be special and said she could feel my love and energy in them. She even had a Hello Kitty no-sew blanket that I made for her that she kept with her even in the memory care facility she was at 
and she loved that blanket. She would tell me about it on the phone when I talked to her. Grandma was with me through every bad breakup and every new relationship, and when I found the man who became my husband, he was easily welcomed into the family. I think Grandma and Grandpa really loved that I married an IT guy who is patient and kind and was always willing to try and help with their computer issues. Grandma even called him one of her grandkids. I think she and Grandpa considered all spouses of us grandkids to be bonus grandkids. A year or two after Grandpa died, Grandma decided to give up driving. She sold me her old Hyundai to replace the not always reliable commuter car I was driving, and I love that car. I think about her and Grandpa every time I drive it to work or drive it anywhere. I feel as if she and Grandpa watch over me as angels and protect me while I drive their old car. The love and hospitality and love for God that Grandma taught me will be with me forever. Grandma was an angel on earth before she became an angel in heaven. I will forever love and miss you, Grandma. Religiously, 
reading the funnies in the paper each morning, playing cards late into the night, or that one time we went to stay in a rusted cabin at Kings Canyon National Park, and no one brought a lantern. So we all went to bed at 6 p.m. when the sun went down, and no one could fall asleep because we were making each other laugh so hard. We all have been touched in some way by my grandma, and without our even knowing this has shaped us and smoothed our rough edges. Without impressing herself on us or trying to fix anyone, we have all picked up a piece of her spirit. Mm -hmm. So go find beauty where others can't. Send love in all directions and heal those who need healing. And have the grace and good sense to laugh at yourself once in a while. We miss you, Grandma, but we are so glad that Grandpa has you back again. I know he's been waiting to see you. something, watching Big Bang Theory, or just talking. But she was also always included. Anyone around her wanted to be there and loved her very dearly. When I decided to move to the Bay Area where I reside now, I told a few people that I was most nervous to tell Grandma. I knew she would be very supportive, but I also knew it would be very hard for her not to put me. As I told her, tears filled her eyes, and then mine, and she told me, you need to follow your heart and fall in love. That's what I did for your grandfather. Part of me was scared to leave her, but I knew, with her blessing, I would be okay to follow my new husband. Grandma, I want you to know how much I love you, how much you mean to me, and how much I will always keep your spirit alive. I will show my baby boys just how amazing their great-grandmother was. Thanks for being the best grandma in the whole world, and give Grandpa a for us. Um, 
And then Debbie's middle name is Barbara, so I've got a trifecta, truly. Um, I think those of you who knew her and those of us in the family, whether you were neighbors or, or uh, fellow church members, um, Barbara was the epitome of patience. And then Jack was the epitome of stubbornness. So you have these two divergent individuals coming together to mesh <laughs> in life. And so we, we know that um, Barbara loved cats. Um, and that's part of the tribute here. This happens to be a lion, a lion on my tie. She loved them whether they were huge cats or domestic cats. And uh, she had, uh, the, the one I remember first was Willie. He was a black cat and he was personality plus. I wasn't so much a cat person, but uh, Willie just grew on you. And um, uh, her patience was such that uh, there was one little task we did together. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had to flea dip a cat. Okay, I got you. Um, Willie was, loved Barbara dearly, but he was not a happy camper, and I was trying to assist with this large, heavy towel that had all this stuff in it, and we were putting him in the, the little um, box, uh, trying to keep him calm, but eventually her, her patience prevailed, and uh, I thought, well, that's, that's one time I did that, and I, I, was, I was quite, a, I'm not blessed with, with her patience, as many of you know. Another thing Barbara did, was her wonderful touch at ornamental horticulture. Um, the children always enjoyed going to, to Grandma's yard because it was uh, so beautiful. And uh, that was her uh, inside and out. And we talked about the six uh, grandchildren, Jennifer being the first, and uh, I would drive her over to uh, the time that Grandma would, would have her over, and Willie, the aforementioned cat was one of her buddies. I, Grandma also instilled a love of animals in Jennifer. And when she would come over as a toddler, uh, Willie always knew what was happening. He would come over to the cabinet and sit and wait for Jennifer <laughs> because she would give him the treats or nummies, as she called them. And uh, that was, that was uh, special. Uh, next came James, um, our son. Uh, whose uh, intellectual uh, acumen <laughs> is from his mother uh, and, and his grandparents. <laughs> um, and uh, following, following James was, was Allie, uh, who came up here and made a wonderful presentation from the heart. Um, follow, following Allie was, uh, uh, and Allie is a, a very accomplished young lady, uh, having not only a couple of kids, but uh, she is uh, a flight attendant as well as a uh, member of the United States Air Force Reserve. Uh, next up, uh, a very uh, talented young lady, uh, and, and we know that Rachel can fix anything with hair, and uh, she's quite accomplished at it and extremely creative, <laughs> as well as having a beautiful heart and sign. Uh, then there's Erica, who is a teacher, and Erica has a wonderful touch with five-year-olds. And then, and last but not least, with, with Josh, and uh, Josh, a big, big guy like my son, our son, uh, Josh uh, installs automobile alarms, and that's not an easy gig. So uh, we can look at all six grandchildren and, and be pleased with what they do, and we're all uh, enjoying any kind of news that we hear uh, regarding their accomplishments. Um, so what I've, what I've learned over these years, um, Jack and Barbara weaved, uh, being where they are, a close-knit family. Um, yes, there are differences, um, real and, and perceived, but we're, we're close-knit. And I was wondering how I was gonna wrap this up, and, and unfortunately the beating beat that we are at there's a sign on the wall in uh, Jennifer and uh, Matt's room. And uh, I think it's very apropos. It says, life takes us 
to unexpected places. Love brings us home. But it is our This ends our time of eulogies. Um, we do have a reception following the service uh, next door in the community center with cookies and coffee and uh, I think some juice. And so we, as you're headed over there, um, you can share, we ask that you do share stories, more stories about Barbara and Jack as well over there at the reception. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And our second uh, reading is from Proverbs, the 31st chapter. A capable wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her. And he will have no lack of, of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Our gospel reading this morning from John 14 is most, the most often chosen text for funerals and memorial services. And this is because I believe these gospel verses ring in the souls of many of the faithful and give us such comfort when we have lost one that we have loved. And the prospect of a giant house, a mansion, being prepared for us to enjoy for all eternity is just too wonderful for words. Visions of an enormous house with grand staircase cases and grand fire mantles, keeping the living space warm as you look out the big, beautiful windows out into nature. All of this readily comes to mind when we ponder this passage. And for those of us fortunate enough to have a mansion in this life, the promise of acquiring one in the life to come stirs the senses as well. And as I read this text, as I prepared this week, and reflected on who Barbara was, as I knew her, it did make me a little uncomfortable, as this was never how Barbara lived out her life. She and her husband, Jack, lived a not-so-typical life in this world, one that looked to serve others. Barbara's life was full of ways that she went out of her way to serve others, heal others in this life, and not accumulate things in this life. Barbara, as I knew her, and Jack, for that matter, as well, would, like me, be a little uncomfortable with any vision of our faith which turns Christianity into something that it's, in some way, just all about us. And there are far too many teachings on Jesus and salvation and heaven which remake Christianity into a narcissistic cult. And that's the very opposite of the kind of faith that I knew of Barbara and Jack and that Jesus presents and calls us to follow. The faith, as Jesus taught it, is all about us loving God and loving our neighbor. It's an outwardly focused faith, which pushes us to look around, to look for a need, and find people to love and our God to adore. When we refashion our faith into a mechanism whereby we just get lots of stuff, we lose that central essence of who Jesus was. The same very essence which compelled Jesus to give his life on the cross, not to just gather a bunch of stuff for himself. And it's that cross-shaped life that we asked to emulate. Take up your cross. I think the key phrase here in this passage from the 14th chapter of John is, in my Father's house. It's not our mansion. It's not our fire mantle. It's not our four-car garage or home theater. It's God's house. And the phrase God's house is used over and over again in the scriptures to refer to the temple in Jerusalem. It's the place where God's name is to be worshipped and praised. It's the place where the presence of God dwells among God's people. It's the place where the heavenly realm and the earthly realm, the heavens and the earth, come together. 
And whether we're talking about the house of God below or the house of God above, we're talking about a place that is first and foremost God's. And Jesus promises to prepare a place in his Father's house for us. And that's where this passage strikes me right in the gut. It's God's house where his name is worshipped and where he dwells a place, a spot. And Barbara is there in the house preparing a place for me, preparing a place for each of you. And she's not alone in making this place. She is there with Jack and with our God. And I know they're there together sharing stories. Sharing stories with all the laughter and joy they shared in this world. But in the great home in heaven. So finally, as I mentioned early, earlier, tell those stories. Share those stories about Barbara and speak her healing name. Tell the stories of how her presence impacted your life. Tell about the joys and laughter and sorrows and losses, successes and failures. Share the ways in which she touched your life and made a difference. Never stop telling the stories because these stories are not simply just some words. They create and call forth presence. And so when you tell the stories about Barbara and Jack, speak not so much with your lips, but with your heart. As she spoke so often with her heart. And these stories are not just a recollection of past events or a recitation of history. They are a never-ending story of Barbara's life. Although none of this will end the grief we have today, I know that. Instead, it renews our hope and our confidence that there is a way forward, even when we can't know the way, even when we don't see it, and even when we don't believe it. You see, life is far too sacred, and the love of God and the love of Barbara are far too strong for death to have the final word. Thanks be to God. And we're going to sing our hymns. You should have the hymnals uh, with you there. And we ask that you do keep your masks on while you sing this one. We sing the morning cry. And let's see. What are you doing? I gotta give you the hymn number. 732. Thank you, Scott. 732. <laughs>
stuff. Sure. may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn, and a sure and certain hope in your loving care. That casting our little sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Barbara. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of saints in light. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you with his life and love and peace this day and always. Amen. When we sing our hymn, You Are Mine, it's hymn number 581. Um, when we get to the last verse, I will be escorting the family next door to the reception, and you can follow them uh, following at the, sorry, the postlude, and you can follow them over there for their reception line in the community center and, and the reception time there as well to share uh, your stories of our room. Now let us go forth in peace.